Let's cover sound then. So you're listening to me now and you're listening to a digital recording of my voice. When I'm speaking to this in a room here, it's in actually in an analog form. So when I'm when you're naturally speaking to somebody right next to you, the sound will be traveling to you in an analog form. And what a computer needs to do is convert that into a digital form, usually with the use of a microphone. Um, and then it will take the sound and it turns it from analog to digital through a process called sampling. Okay, sampling, that's an important word to remember. And what it does is this, at regular intervals, it measures the height or the amplitude of the uh, sound wave. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's pop the graph of a sound wave on the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is draw a kind of a sound graph, the likes of which you've probably seen in sort of like a physics lesson. So let's do like a wavy one like this. Um, and because I'm doing a graph, I should do two things. Uh, I'm gonna label the axes. So this bottom one here is uh, the sound wave over time. And you're wondering what this, uh, what the y axis is. Well, that's this thing called amplitude. So that's the height of sort of the sound wave. And I've got two things that I need to consider when I'm capturing this sound, converting it from analog to digital. The first is how often I take a measurement of the height of that wave, and that will be called the sampling rate. So I'm gonna write that here. Uh, and the other thing is how many options I have to measure the height of that wave, and that will become a bit clearer uh, in a little bit when I talk about the bit rate, so how accurate I can get the height of that sound wave at any given point. And what I'm gonna do is just start off with a fairly low sampling rate. So I'm gonna draw, say I've got sample say every second or something, and draw five things along the bottom there. Uh, and let's say I haven't got very, very many options to choose for the height of my sound wave, so I've got quite a low bit rate as well. And sampling works like this. Every time I take a sample, I look for um, when I can next take a sample according to my sampling rate, and I match the height of the sound wave to the closest bit rate uh, that I've got. So that's gonna be here, uh, that's gonna be probably here, uh, here, so because it matches up over there. Uh, this one matches up to this one here, and then this one, ooh, probably about that one there, okay? Um, so that's the samples that I've taken. But if I draw a line between these dots, if I join the dots up, you'll see I haven't really got a very accurate representation of my sound wave. Every time that line is not matching um, what what's on my sound wave, you're gonna hear it, your your ears will pick up that it's not exact, okay? So that's what we're gonna do with to start with. We're gonna take this sound wave, I'm gonna just save it for a little bit later. I'm gonna show you how we can get a slightly more accurate sound wave. And the first thing that I can do is increase the sampling rate. So instead of taking samples every second, maybe I change it so I'm taking samples every half second. So let's do the dots for that. I'm still as restricted with my bit rate here, so I still have to match up to one of these four different options uh, along the left-hand side, but let's see how we do. So I'll speed this up a bit so you don't have to hang around. Here we go. And let's join these dots up. And as you can see, I'm still a fair way off my sound wave here, um, but I've probably got a better rest representation of the sound than I did do originally. So if you compare these two here, I'm doing a little bit better. So by increasing the sampling rate, I've got a slightly better representation of my sound. The other thing that I can do is increase the bit rate so I can give myself more options to, options to choose from um, when I'm recording the amplitude of the sound. So let's do this once more with a higher bit rate and sampling rate and see if we get any closer. Let's join up these dots. Whoops, forgot one. Let's do that one there, probably. So again, it's not perfect. It never is going to be. It's never gonna be as good as analog sound, but we're much closer to the original sound wave if we compare uh, this one to the original one with a, low, with a low bit rate and a low sampling rate to increasing our, our sampling rate and then eventually increasing our bit rate as well. We get much closer to it. So you might ask, well, why don't we just have the biggest possible sampling rate and bit rate? It's not as simple as that because every time we increase the bit rate or the sampling rate, it increases the file size as well. So the trade-off for quality, if we ever want higher quality for sound is that you're always gonna end up with a higher file size too. And that's sampling of sound. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.